In the next five minutes, I'm going to show you how to use a color chart to get your CG renders to perfectly match your footage every single time. So the process is actually fairly simple. This is the background plate that I filmed to be adding the CG into. And at the end of the shot, I brought in the color chart and I rotated it slightly to get a few different angles. This way later on, I can pick the angle that has the best lighting. Just before I export the plate to start doing the compositing, I do a color space transform, which is taking my footage from Log, which is Blackmagic Film Gen 5, and converting it into Aces CG, which is a linear color space for working in. You can also choose to do this within your compositing software if you prefer. The important part here is that by the time you start doing the visual effects work, all of your sources should be in the same color space. I'm using Nuke in this example, but I'm also going to demonstrate a way of doing this that you can use in any software. So first off, this is the professional way that's done at VFX Studios. I'm going to take the plate of my color chart and use a tool that allows me to analyze the color chart's colors. In this case, I'm using one called MM Color Target for Nuke. This tool allows me to overlay a digital version of my color chart colors over the top of my plate. Then this tool analyzes the color chart and will do a color transform to even out the white balance and exposure of my shot. And as you can see, once that's done, the shot now has a better exposure and the white balance is also corrected to be more neutral. Next, I do the same process to an HDRI that I took in the same location. Again, I have the color chart in the shot and I'm going to neutralize this using the same technique. This color balancing of the two different cameras is the most important part of the process because it takes two different sources that interpret the red, green and blue information of the world around them differently and brings them all into the same place, meaning the visual effects that we add will be far more cohesive. With the neutral versions of both of these exported, I can then go into Blender and set up my scene. I create some simple ground geometry, which will be my shadow catcher, and I also project my plate onto this to give the interaction with the floor the correct colour. Next, I bring in my HDRI and rotate it to be in the correct orientation based on my footage. Then I add a plane into my blender scene with the texture of the colour chart on it. Once it's in the scene, I put it in a similar position to where my actual colour chart was, and then I rendered one frame and sampled the middle grey square. As you can see, the values of the color chart in Blender are lower than the ones that I had in Nuke, which means that my scene is underexposed. So to account for this, I just need to increase the strength of my HDRI. I can just do this by turning up the strength of my environment texture, making an adjustment and then rendering again until I get the values to be correct. Although I rarely denoise my final renders, turning it on at this stage can be very useful, as denoising flattens out the gray square, which makes it easier to get a good reading of the color values. Once this is done, I know that my 3D scene is set up with the correct exposure, the color charts both match between Blender and Nuke, and I can now do the final render. Then I render my CG out of Blender with the main beauty channel as well as the depth pass and a shadow catcher embedded as AOVs. The CG render is also technically neutralized in terms of color because it's using the neutralized HDRI to light the scene. But I want to comp this over the top of my unneutralized plate. The reason for this is you want to preserve the original footage as much as possible when doing visual effects. So I don't want to be doing anything to it that might affect things like the color grade later in the process. Instead what I want to do is reverse the neutralization process on my CG render which applies the original color of my footage onto the CG render. To do this, I can simply take the color matrix node that was generated and invert it, which will transform the CG color backwards to match my footage. And that's really all there is to it. This is a really good starting point as it means everything is pretty balanced, but that doesn't mean you have to stop here. You still want to use your eye to judge if the scene is working. I felt the shoe was a little bit too bright, so I just dropped the exposure a tiny bit more to make it feel more realistic, as well as matching my black point to everything else in the footage, adding a little bit of defocus using the depth pass and a tiny bit of bloom on the highlights. So at this stage, let's compare the two. This is the final comp using the color chart workflow, and this is what it would look like if I just brought the HDRI straight into Blender and rendered it with the color that was captured in camera without any post adjustments. As you can see, there's a big discrepancy in terms of luminance and color balancing. And while during compositing, I could manually make this look better by adjusting the white balance and exposure, the color chart process is a mathematical way of making everything look perfect every time, no matter your scene and the different cameras. Now, in this video, I'm sharing my VFX skills with you guys. And another place that people share their skills online is Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of creative classes for people like us. I've personally been checking out a class on cloth simulations in Blender to expand my knowledge. And I've been learning it to utilize in my latest video, which is my entry for the Ponisher Rampage Rally Render Competition. The classes are short, straight to the point, and taught by super talented creators, illustrators, designers, and entrepreneurs. And you can learn on your phone or laptop whenever you have the time. What I love about Skillshare is it's made for real-time learning, so you can go at your own pace, create actual projects, and even get feedback from the community. They have a really fantastic variety of the categories available. This includes animation and 3D, art illustration, design, film and video, photography, productivity, and much more. Whether you're just starting out or trying to go pro, there's something for you. If you'd like to try it out, the first 500 people to use my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. So go check it out, learn something new, build your skills and take your creativity to the next level. 
So that's the professional way of doing it, using Nuke as well as MM Color Target, which is a third party tool. Now let's look at how you could do this if you're using a different software. While the color chart overlay is extremely helpful and a bit more accurate, the main two things this process is really doing is getting a better exposure on your footage as well as neutralizing the white balance. Both of these things you can actually do very simply just by color sampling the gray in the footage. As you can see from my color neutralized version, once I've done the adjustment, my red, green and blue channels are sitting somewhere around 0.2. So to do this process manually, all we have to do is change the colors in our footage until that gray square represents those values. So I can add a grade node, open up the multiply section, and then first of all I'm just going to increase the slider until my exposure comes up to something around 0.2. From here I can then adjust the red, green and blue channels separately to get the white balance correct as well. So I'm balancing it until all the numbers are roughly the same value. In After Effects you can achieve this with a curves effect, and in Fusion you can use the color correct node, but all compositing softwares will have similar tools to let you adjust the colors. You can see this has now neutralized my shot pretty well. If I flick between the MM color target version and my grade one, you can see they're actually pretty similar. There's a bit more red in the one that I've done manually. MM Color Target does a better job of controlling the overall colors, but generally speaking, this will have a very minimal effect on the overall outcome. So I can now take the HDRI that I've graded manually into Blender and render it with the same setup, and then bring that render back into Nuke and compare the two. This is the difference. As you can see, it's really similar. Again, to reverse the color transform, I can just take my grade node, put this underneath my CG render, and tick reverse, which again does the backwards transform to get the CG render colors to match my footage. If you're in a software that doesn't have the flexibility to reverse color transforms in this way, you can just composite this render on top of your neutralized footage instead. Although it's not technically the best way of doing it, unless you're working at a high-end visual effects studio, this really doesn't matter at all. So, that's it. Not as complicated as you might think. The assets and project files from this video are going to be available on my Patreon if you would like to download them and have a play yourself. Consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed for more videos like this. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.